What about you guys? How's it going? I hope you're all keeping well today. So if you've been on the channel before, you'll have seen that I've talked a lot about the gear that I owned, especially in that little link up in the top corner there. From the likes of the Samyang 35mm f2.8, which I reviewed, to the Manfrotto Element tripod, which I have reviewed as well. But I thought for today's video, I'd go a little bit more back in time and go deeper into my camera bag and talk about one lens that I have owned and still own to this day, and that is the Sony 50mm f1.8 FE lens. So for all my Sony compadres out there, you'll understand that Sony glass is generally pretty expensive, yeah? Especially when the FE mounts started coming out, so there wasn't too much in regards to affordability or compatibility as well. On the affordability front, the main lens that you had was the Zeiss 55mm f1.8, which is an absolutely stunning lens. On a compatibility front, the only 50mm that knocked around outside of that was the Sony 50mm f1.8 OSS lens, which was great if you were on a crop sensor camera, not so much on the likes of the A7, the A7R, or the A7S. So this is where we had a dilemma. This lens is too expensive. This lens here will crop my image if I put it onto a full frame camera. So that's why Sony brought out the 50mm f1.8 FE lens, because it gave a nice balance between the two. Plus as well, that was one of the main reasons why I bought this lens in the first place, because it was cheap as chips. But straight out of the box, you're left with the lens itself, lens cap, back cap, and of course the lens hood as well, which actually does stick out compared to the Samyang. Goes on neatly like so. Now, holding this lens, you can feel why it's so cheap and affordable. It's because it's made out of a high quality plastic. So that'll mean that if it's knocked around or anything, you might be more at risk of getting damaged or it's not weather sealed. But that being said, even though it's a high quality plastic around the body and the lens hood and such, the mount is metal. It's a nice lightweight lens, nice and easy enough to carry around, weighing in only 186 grams. So you'll not really notice that when it's being carried around in your camera bag or anything, or when it's attached to the camera as well. So the handy thing about the Sony full frame cameras is that most of the controls, the likes of changing from auto to manual focus is all built into the camera. And that can be the case on the likes of this lens. There's no switches or anything on here, which is really cool. All you're left with is a manual focus ring, which is actually really smooth at the turn, really durable and all as well. The lens doesn't come with a built-in image stabilization, so that would be one thing you would want to watch out for. But if your camera has the built-in 5-axis stabilization, then maybe it might not be the biggest of worry. But it's one thing you want to look out for compared to some of the other lenses. So let's have a look at what this lens is like at different apertures, shall we? So starting at the lowest aperture, we've got f1.8, and you can see just how smooth the photograph is. And as we move to f2, you can see it gets rid of some of that v-netting as well. Now we're going up to 2.8, starting to sharpen up a little bit more. And at f4, and even around the likes of f5.6, you can see there's a nice sweet spot here. Now we're moving on up to the likes of f8 and f11, getting sharper and all as well, and getting brighter even up to f16 and then finally f22 so it is a great lens all around nice and sharp in the center yeah a bit smooth around the edge but sure where the distortion is concerned let's have a look so with this image now opened up in lightroom you can see from the before and after that we've turned on the lens correction that there isn't too much in regards to the distortion the lines are still kept nice and straight and as mentioned in the aperture part that even at f1.8 there's a lot of v and editing and this shot was taken at f1.8 and you can see that lens correction has gotten rid of that VN netting. So you can see that there isn't too much distortion just on the VN netting front. So the lens does have full autofocus, which is, of course, a big benefit. With the lens itself, the lens will go in and out whenever it comes to autofocusing. Plus, as well, it's very noisy. So if you're using this for video and you don't have an external microphone, you will start to notice the noise very evidently in your video afterwards, which we'll hear in this example. And why don't we see what the autofocus performance is like when we turn on tracking. So here we go.
Now I've taken this lens out for a lot of different sort of scenarios and I have used this for a lot of my own concert photography. In the lower light conditions, yeah, once it gets a focus, it's absolutely beautiful, but it can hunt about a good fair bit. So you would want to maybe take that in mind if you are wanting to get this for the likes of concert photography. But it's not too much of a hunt and as I say, once it actually locks into place, it actually takes phenomenal photographs that can remain at a really great sharpness, especially at those lower light conditions. So just some more image examples. These of course have been processed and edited already from the likes of portraiture work to some more landscape to even all the way to the likes of the concert photography. You can see the lens holds up very well in different sort of conditions. So like I said, while this lens may not exactly be the most perfect lens, especially compared to the Zeiss 55, I still love it. You know, it does have its qualms, but I still hold it dear to my heart and I still use it even after having it for a couple of years. So if you are in the market for a cheap, affordable lens for your Sony equipments, I wouldn't exactly stub my nose at this here. Yeah, take on the likes of the faults and such, but at the end of the day, the lens will perform absolutely fantastically for whatever sort of style of photography you're wanting to get into. So if you've been wanting to find out more about this lens and this has been the video for you, great, let me know in the comments down below. Or if you do happen to own this lens, let me know as well. And do also like, share and press that wee subscribe button so that you can stay up to date with future videos. Folks, thanks very much for coming and checking out this video. I hope you have a great day. Take care.